Hello, thanks for joining me. I'm back. I'm going to begin reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Um, so we get into the New Testament. Um, and uh, because there's a lot in here pertaining to our time as well. So I'm going to begin. I'm going to read the foreword. Matthew is the Gospel written by a Jew to Jews about a Jew. Matthew is the writer. His countrymen are the readers. And Jesus Christ is the subject. Matthew's design is to present Jesus as the King of the Jews, the long-awaited Messiah. Through a carefully selected series of Old Testament quotations, Matthew documents Jesus Christ's claim to be the Messiah. His genealogy, baptism, messages, and miracles all point to the same inescapable conclusion. Christ is King. Even in his death, Seeming, def seeming defeat is turned to victory by the resurrection. And the message again echoes forth, the King of the Jews lives. At an early date, this gospel was given the title Kata Methanaean, according to Matthew. As this title suggests, other gospel accounts were known at that time. The word gospel was added later. Matthew, or gift of the Lord, was also surnamed Levi in Mark 2.14. Okay, so chapter 1. The book of the gen generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham, Ab Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, and Judas begat Phares and Zerah of Tamar, and Phares begat Ezram, and Ezram begat Aram, and Aram begat Aminadab, and Aminadab begat Nesanon, uh, Nason, and Nason begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rechab, and Rechab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon, and notice it doesn't say Bathsheba's name, but it says of her that had been the wife of Urias. Now, it's an interesting thing how it took up all those words to make reference to Bathsheba, but it doesn't name Bathsheba. So it's an interesting thing. And Solomon begat uh, Rob Roboam, and Roboam begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa. And Asa begat Je Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias, and Ozias begat jo Jotham, and Jotham begat Achaz, and Achaz begat Ezekias, and Ezekias begat Manasseh, and Manasseh begat Amon, and Amon begat Josias, and Josias begat Jeconias and his brethren, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Remember, I believe that was like 587 BC. Okay. And after they were brought to Babylon, Jeconias begat Salathiel, and Salathiel begat Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel begat uh, Abiad, and Abiad begat Eliakim, and Eliakim begat Azor, and Azor begat Sadok, and Sadok begat Achim, and Achim begat Eliad, and Eliad begat Eleazar, and Eleazar begat Mathan, and Mathan begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David until the carrying away into Babylon are 14 generations, and from the carrying away unto Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now it says, before they came together. Okay, so it doesn't say that it never came together, but I know that, that um, some religions like to say that, uh, that Mary continued, that she was never, you know, that she, that they never consummated, they were, that she was always a virgin. But that's not, that's not the case. It says here, 
Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. So, you know, she was, um, she was a virgin, the Virgin Mary. But after she gave birth to Jesus, um, you know, most married couples would be together and consummate, you know, and, and go on to have children. So I believe that there were other family members, that they had other children. Then Joseph, her husband, be, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Chapter 2 Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east in Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, I'm sorry, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Now, okay, so Herod is all, you know, concerned, he's worried, he's He's feeling a little threatened. He wants to know more about where, you know, where is this child supposed to be born? And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Okay, the governor rests upon his head, you know, <laughs> his shoulders. Then Herod when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. So it's interesting, they saw the star. So um, so a lot was, was known. You know, these were wise men. They studied the constellations. They saw the star. They knew that it had a special meaning. And they followed the star, you know. And uh, when, they, when they saw the star, they rejoiced and with exceeding great joy. So they must have known this particular star was, uh, was one that, um, would, that would come in a full, fullness of time, uh, that is in the timeline of when Messiah would come. They must have known this, you know. They were wise men. They studied a lot, okay. So they had some information. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. So they knew who the baby was. They knew because of their study. These were wise men. They studied and uh, fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So they were warned by God in a dream. Today in our day, God is pouring his spirit out on all flesh. And our young men dream dreams and our maids have, you know, we have visions. But God speaks to us uh, today in our dreams. We're getting downloads. I'm dreaming so much lately. I can tell you, and I, I really need to uh, make it a, ha a habit of writing down my dreams because some of them are so, so potent and detailed and vivid and 
but you know when you wake up you only capture that last um it's so fleeting so <laughs> you, you can forget but anyway uh, yes uh, god definitely spoke um uh, spoke uh to joseph in a dream and here uh they, uh, be warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod. They departed into their own country another way. So the wise men had a dream. Okay. And throughout scripture, we're always seeing how people have dreams. God speaks to us in dreams. He gives us downloads in dreams. And the dreams have meanings and interpretations, you know. And when they were departed, behold, you remember back in the time Joseph was um, uh, in prison, in Egypt, remember his brother sold him as a, uh, to the Israelites. He wound up in Egypt uh, in prison, um, but but when he was there, the baker and, and um, the the baker and the butcher were there, and they had dreams, and Joseph interpreted those dreams, um, and the same with with Pharaoh. You know, he interpreted Pharaoh's dreams as well. And God spoke to him and gave him interpretation of the dreams so that um, because it was very real, it was events that would take place shortly. There were seven years of plenty followed by seven years of famine. Okay, so God speaks to us in dreams. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared, appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be there, be thou there until I bring thee word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod and uh, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceeding wroth, and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem, and in all the coasts thereof, from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted because they are not. You see, they're always trying to destroy the children of God, you know, even in our day. I mean, all the babies that are being born, and look at all the, uh, there's a lot of abortions that take place, you know. And even late birth abortion, partial birth abortion, you know, it's disgusting what they do. But, um, yeah, there's one side that just doesn't have a conscience about things like that, you know. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared, appeareth in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. So God's protecting us too through dreams. He gives us dreams to protect our lives too. You know, and he arose and took the young child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judea in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither. Notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside into the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. Chapter 3 In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his, to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance, and think not, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. 
I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to be, to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and, lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And, lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Chapter 4 Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, all these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. Now, when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast, in the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, then it might be, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw a great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Chapter 5 And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. 
Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And I just want to say something there. <laughs> Because, um, especially in this particular time of spiritual warfare, you know, many of us have been um, so slandered and so vilified and uh, so uh, malicious lies and spoken uh, evil of us, you know, because of our faith, because of our, our belief in Jesus and because of uh, our happiness and our joy. You know, and for that, for no other reason than that, other than you have a little spark, you know, a little spark of light. I'm going to tell you, it can lighten and brighten the darkest corners of the earth. All right. It's tremendous power in a little spark of light, you know, but even a little bit of light that we might have is enough to trigger the demons and others. I'm telling you. I mean, they come at you, and they, the attacks have been so, so severe. But you know what? I, I just remember this verse here, rejoice and be exceeding glad. And this has been my, <laughs> you know, I can personally attribute to this. Be exceeding glad. First of all, they forgive them, for they know not what they do. Okay, they don't know. Not everybody has faith to believe on the Most High God. I mean, we all have the choice, you know, God gives us free will, but um, faith, um, you know, comes with hearing and hearing by the word of God. Not everybody is interested in hearing the gospel message, the fountain of living waters, you know. But I rejoice and, and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. You know, it's a very happy thing to know that you are being bullied and, uh, and, and just... Um, torn apart and uh, your, def your character is defamed and you're being discredited and they're knocking you down and lying, um, lying on you and making false reports on you and, and getting other paying other people to lie on you. I mean, literally, that has been my story. There's a big group, a, a cult of, of uh, Satan worshipers, and they have been slandering my name and spreading malicious lies and gossip and paying people to spread it wide and far. That's how far, you know, when you have a little spark of light, that is enough to set off <laughs> the, these people. But that is why the Lord tells us, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. You know, I wear it as a badge of honor. Anytime somebody slanders me, <laughs> you know, because I know that um, be, rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. So there's nothing new under the sun. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is therefore good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden underfoot by men or of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, for they, that they might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill for verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least of these commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. 
Now, don't freak out because I know some people get tripped up by that, that verse and they, they think, oh my gosh, we've got to do even more perfect than they did. No, the, it, Christ is the one that did all the work. So, um, so he, did, he is the one who fulfills all the law and the prophets perfectly, one time on behalf of all of mankind forever. So we rest in him and we abide in him. But he is, um, you know, uh, so the righteousness has to be even more perfect than the what the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, what the Pharisees, uh, the scribes and Pharisees did, and Jesus Christ did that. <laughs> so uh, he he clothes us with his robe of righteousness. What he did at the cross, okay? Because mankind falls short of the glory of God. We can never in our in and of ourselves do that or fulfill the law, okay? But we can go within and seek the kingdom of heaven because that's what Jesus tells us to do. Go within, you know, seek first the kingdom. And the, and the kingdom of heaven is within you, okay? Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Reka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Now, I have forgiven everyone, but you can forgive people from a distance. Forgiving them, like I said before, doesn't mean that you have that you condone their behavior or that you have to have them in your life or that they have to, you know, attach themselves to you. And No, you can forgive people from a distance, but you reap what you sow. And people that are under judgment, they've got to go and, um, they've got to go and um, live out their karma because that is the lot that they, that's the chain that they forged while while here you know so you can't um you can't partake of another person's karma you gotta god wants us to leave off those that do not serve our purposes because they gotta go and receive their lessons everybody has their own lessons that they have to learn and we're not all at the same pace and so it's it's we don't hate anybody and we we certainly pray for our family members you know uh, pray that uh, they will be saved, you know, but all together it's in God's hands and he handles it from, from at a certain point. God gives everyone time. You know, he's so long suffering and so patient because of the love that he has for people. He's not willing that any should perish. He, he really wants everybody to uh, repent and believe on the gospel. And uh, repent means to turn from, okay? You got to turn from the wickedness that you're doing if you're if you're slandering someone if you're gossiping and lying about a person you got to stop because you're only destroying yourself your own soul and he gives people time to repent and to confess but when people you know you can't you can't force people to do anything i mean people choose what they want to do so um okay Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remembers that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary, uh, adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the ad adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. Ye have heard that it was said by them of all time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. See, it's altogether a heart matter. A heart matter. You know, and so uh, lusting after something that takes the place of God in our hearts, that's a problem for God, you know, because he's a jealous God. But he's our husband, but it's like, you know, you, you being married and you, you, you love your husband, right? You wouldn't dream of, like, um, looking at someone else or, you know, for fleeting, you know, kind of, you know, having a male friend or anything like that, you know, because maybe because that's disrespectful and that's not being honorable, uh, that is not treating your, your spouse with respect. I mean, you just wouldn't do that. You wouldn't want to do that. But today, unfortunately, many, many people do. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Because marriage truly is a, a beautiful thing when you can um, have it with the right person, you know. 
I, I marry twice, both to, to two wrong people. <laughs> so, but I'm just saying, I still love, I, I believe in the sanctity of marriage and the sacredness of it. And uh, I, I choose, I, I don't, would not really want to marry again, but God keeps uh, telling me that, you know, anyway, it is what it is. I, I, I'm not interested, but anyway, huh. You know, I choose my freedom. I love that I'm free. <laughs> I really like my life. I like my singlehood. But, um, yeah, marriage uh, is quite a commitment, you know. And the thing is, with today, and there's so much, uh, the level of deception is so great. You know, there's risk. I just don't see, uh, I have not met anyone. Let's just put it that way. I, I don't know a single person that I would even think about looking twice at you know there's just nobody that i've come across at all um but i i'm on a spiritual journey so i'm good alone you know plus i've lived you know enough years married and really i just i want to enjoy my time so but uh we're 31 minutes okay let's see verily i say unto you thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing you have heard that it was said by them of old time, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. It hath been said, Whosoever shall, shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, ha uh, saving for the, for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is, it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither shall thou swear by thy, by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, and nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him also the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn, thou, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and he sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do, or uh, publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Chapter 6. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men. To be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy right hand know what thy not, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not as the hypocrites are. 
For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, shut thy door, and by the way, a closet is pertaining to your heart. Enter into your heart. Enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard <coughs> for their much speaking. <coughs> Excuse me. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad, a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And that is so true. You know, when you have a heart for the Lord, that's your treasure. And no man can break it and steal that. That's a wonderful thing. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. That's when we're uh, seeing spiritually, okay, single to be single-sided, you know. It's when we put on the mind of Christ and we are keeping our, our mind on things above and not on things below. Uh, we are uh, we go from being carnally minded to, excuse me, spiritually minded. And um, so let me read that again. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be sm uh, single, Thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If, there, if therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that, that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So there's just light and there's darkness. There's two masters, you know, and um, in, in, in hell there is like no light, okay? So uh, only in Christ is there light. All right. Therefore I say unto you, uh, excuse me, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 
For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And that's, you know, that's our focus. Seek ye first. So that's the first uh, uh, order of operation. <laughs> okay, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And I'm going to leave it there because we're at 40 minutes, and I will be back with chapter 7. Okay, peace out, and God bless everybody. Everybody, bye.